the Brooklyn Dome would have changed everything. Not only would it have kept the Dodgers in New York, but it also would have been the first Dome Stadium in history. We're going to be discussing what was the Brooklyn Dome, what was the proposal like, and then also some potential proposals for Los Angeles that didn't end up happening. Of course, the Dodgers moved to LA. They play at the LA Coliseum for a few years as Dodger Stadium gets built, and then they move into Dodger Stadium, and Dodger Stadium looks, honestly, almost completely identical right now to when it was built back in the 1960s. But the Brooklyn Dome was a domed stadium proposal with a capacity of 52,000 that was meant to be built right near the current site location of the Barclays Center. Now, obviously, if the Brooklyn Dome would have been built in 1960, there's a virtual 0% chance it would be around today. I'm guessing it suffers a similar fate to the Astrodome where... Well, actually, the Astrodome is still standing technically, but very likely by the year 2000, it would have been completely phased out and obsolete. Now, when it comes to the design of the Brooklyn Dome, there are a lot of different renderings. There's this really cool new rendering that they did. They did this for a few different stadiums that were never built. You can see some type of very cool translucent roof. Could this have been a translucent roof stadium in the 1960s? I don't think so, personally. I'm guessing this rendering, you know, based on the technology that we had back then, the roof of it, if they wanted to try and let in natural light, it probably would have looked very similar to the Astro Dome and not really this translucent designs. Now looking at the older models for the Brooklyn Dome, it's almost funny how ridiculous the old models for stadiums were. It's like a balloon. I mean, you can't even detect where the actual upper deck lower bowls are or anything like that. There is a really interesting, potential, entirely different rendering of a Brooklyn Dome that would be fully enclosed with zero natural light, but it would at least also include a shopping mall, a movie theater. Could you imagine something like that being built today? I mean, maybe the Orlando Dreamers are trying to do something like that, uh, but it is pretty remarkable. There are some people that theorize that then-Dodgers owner was trying to push this potential dome model because he knew it had a 0% chance or at least a very low percent chance of actually happening and he wanted to move the Dodgers to LA, which of course inevitably ended up happening. So that is the Brooklyn Dome design right there. Unfortunately, there are no interior potential you know, models of it. This was the 1950s. The original model came out in 1955 and the project was pretty much scrapped just a few years later when they decided to move to Los Angeles and they needed a new stadium in Los Angeles, maybe even like a temporary home. And there were a few different options after it became official that they were moving. The first one was a potential L.A. Wrigley expansion. And this is probably the most interesting one. While exploring ballpark possibilities for the soon-to-relocate Brooklyn Dodgers, this concept of expanding Los Angeles Wrigley Field was proposed, and the upper and lower levels would be extended all the way to center field. The Dodgers instead chose the LA Coliseum as their temporary home as Dodger Stadium was under construction. So you can see the potential Wrigley Field 2.0. Yes, there was. There was another Wrigley Field. Unfortunately, this never happened. If it would have happened, it would have been a really cool design to see. No, I do not think this would still be around today. Day. I'm guessing they would have moved into this LA Wrigley expanded version, which is just basically adding seats to the outfield. They probably would have been there for 15 to 20 years and then built up, I don't know, maybe a ver variant of Dodger Stadium. Although who knows, Dodger Stadium might look completely different if they decided to build it 20 years later based off of the evolution of building techniques. We know how much those change. It's just like the idea of building a stadium in the year 2000 versus 2020. It's going to be completely different, but there was that idea. And then there was also another concept, which it's kind of hard to make out what exactly it was. This was designed in 1957, and it was for the Chavez Ravine site, which is where the current Dodger Stadium is located, but you can tell it is a very different overall model. Definitely has that old-type vibe and feel to it. 
with, you know, there's basically no sweets or anything like that. It's kind of hard to make out because it is just one drawing of a potential stadium there. But alas, they do end up going with Dodger Stadium. And again, it is very remarkable that Dodger Stadium is still currently virtually the same exact stadium that it was in the 1960s when it was being constructed and completed. And there's a few different reasons for why that is, you know, and, and why is that so rare. Number one, when it comes to the capacity, it sits around 56,000. It's a massive amount of people. It is a huge MLB stadium. Not really back then, you know, by the 1960s standards, 50,000 people with the amount of multi-purpose stadiums that were going up, that was pretty standard. But nowadays, it's huge. It's by far the biggest stadium in MLB. The reason they've been able to keep it that way and not have to take out seats in the upper deck or turn them into social spaces or anything like that is because of the ridiculous attendance that they get and the massive population center that is LA. Also, it doesn't hurt that the Dodgers spend a ridiculous amount of money every year. They're always in the playoffs. They've just won a World Series in 2020, but that's one of the bigger reasons. The next question I would say for Dodger Stadium Will it reach a century? Will Dodger Stadium last a hundred years? I'm really skeptical that it'll make it, honestly, because I think with LA getting hotter and hotter, they're going to want some type of dome stadium. And nowadays, you can do the dome stadium so well and have the natural light get let in. It just seems so obvious that they would go to something like that. You also have to understand they could make a stadium with a capacity of 50K and up the ticket prices, even if the stadium is going to cost... Honestly, if they built like a brand new Dodger Stadium with a retractable roof in LA, it would probably cost like $2 billion, I would say. Maybe slightly less because MLB stadiums do tend to be a little bit less than... NFL stadiums, but in general, I would say maybe by the year 2050, we could see a new variant of Dodger Stadium. I'm guessing they would incorporate a bunch of the design features of the old Dodger Stadium with kind of a modern glow and possibly add in a roof whether it's retractable or not, I don't know. It really just depends on the climate. There's a very small amount of places you can really do a successful retractable roof to where it's open like 50-50. Seattle's basically, honestly, one of the only places you can do it. LA, I mean, maybe you could do it. The good thing with LA, they really don't have rain, so you wouldn't have to deal with that, but you would still have to deal with the heat and, and that's a big issue when it comes to retractable roofs. If it's 80 degrees outside, they're always going to close the roof. Even if it's perfectly, you know, beautiful, it's a, it's a nice summer night, they're going to want it climate controlled because theoretically it's better to be 72 degrees than 80 degrees, and, and that is that. So guys, that is the story of the Brooklyn Dome. This project really had a very small percent chance of happening when it was even announced, and I think the Brooklyn Dome probably would have lasted for about 40 years. The design of it would have been obsolete like likely by the early 1990s when we saw the real ballpark boom with Coors Field, Jacobs Field, and Oriole Park at Camden Yards kind of making it obsolete completely. I do think the design of it, it would have been pretty rough around the edges. I mean, it would have kind of been like the Astrodome, and it's all, it, it, it is all based off a decade. You know, in the 1960s, the Astrodome was this super stadium, and really we look at it today and it, it does look like a complete dump, but it's just based off of when it was built. So I think the stadium would have aged very similarly to the Astrodome. Would they have had some type of natural light let in? They plan to do it, but I do think that newer rendering that was done, that's giving them a little bit too much credit. It's like they're using modern building techniques into designing an old stadium and it just would not look that good. That looks like a really nice like translucent roof that I don't think would have happened. I'm guessing the stadium would have had, you know, a pretty large upper deck, pretty large outfield expansive seating because of the capacity of 52K. It's hilarious, a stadium with a capacity of 52K being built now, you know, it, it seems like a massive stadium. Although, technically back then, it would be considered slightly small. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.